Our May 2022 Streets of New York workshop is just weeks away and we only have two spots left. If you're at all interested, please hop over to www.3bmep.com slash streets22 and sign up while you can. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and I'm delighted to come back to you courtesy of Like a Camera, this time to discuss a very special auction occurring in a couple of months. We're doing this a little bit early. Chief among the auction items is an extraordinarily rare piece number 105 of the Zero series, the original Oscar Barnack Leicas. In fact, this particular Leica was owned by Oscar Barnack. Now, joining me today in the center is Alex Sedlak. He is the managing director of Leica Austria and Leica Camera Classics, the uh, umbrella organization for Leica auctions. To his left, Denis Ivaskiewicz, to his right, Andreas Schweiger. So guys, I'm going to ask you to tell us a little bit about your backgrounds. Alex, let's begin with you. Yeah, sure. A uh, very warm welcome. Um, I'm, as you have managed, uh, mentioned, I'm the managing director of the uh, auction house. I'm working for Leica since more than 10 years for the Leica Camera G, but I'm in touch with the brand since more than 30 years. So um, I'm very passionate by myself, and it's a great pleasure that uh, when uh, Leica Camera G has overtaken the auction house um, around about eight years ago, the process started, uh, I had uh, the pleasure to manage it. Fantastic. Now, again, to your left is Dennis. And Dennis, I understand you are a specialist in vintage cameras. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what that means? Uh, yeah, we uh, in Vienna, we have a shop. I was store manager of the classic store in Vienna. So we purchase and sell uh, vintage cameras, not only Leica or brands uh, every day. And some, we will talk about that. Some very exclusive uh items go into the auction so we through our hands there's a lot of cameras going in and out so you see a lot over the years i'm with the company for almost 10 years now so i think there's it's building a little bit of expertise for background andreas let's talk about your role as head of auction organization what does that mean uh, it means i'm planning the event the auction itself I'm taking care of all the contracts, for example, for, for, for the sellers. I'm taking care of the buyers so they get the import invoice from me after the auction. And yes, uh, we are producing, for example, a catalog for every auction. So I'm checking that uh, we get the catalog in time. Every camera is uh, gets a, a picture in our photo studio. Every camera, camera gets the description. And um, I'm taking care of all the timelines. In fact, I've had a chance to look at your catalog and it is just a piece of art in and of itself. Beautiful, beautiful imagery. Congratulations on that. The highlight catalog for our 20 most important pieces. The main catalog will come uh, by the beginning of May with all the 430 lots that are going for sale in June. 430. Wow. Wow. And so is there a typical amount that you raise at, at one of these auctions? Uh, approximately around about three to four millions per auction. Um, we have a 20 years history, as, uh, as you have mentioned already. So 
till today, I would say approximately we have sold 25,000 25, lots. Um, normally, as uh, my colleague uh, has already told you, we are uh, offering uh, four, between four and 500 lots per auction. We are uh, organizing two auctions a year. Um, before pandemic, we had, uh, um, our goal was to do one auction at the Leitzberg, at the mothership of Leica, and the other one in Vienna, where our auction house is located. Um, next, yeah, this is. And, and have you reached the point where you're comfortable having these auctions in person this year, or will they be online? No, it will, it will be a live auction uh, in person, yeah. How many attendees uh, do you anticipate being there in June? This is very difficult to answer because we do not know how the travel restriction will be. Uh, we have a lot of uh, Asian customers in the past who have visited uh, and have joined uh, our, our auctions in person. We do not know if this is possible in June, but we hope that some uh, US customers will come. There will come uh, a lot of European customers. So I would, I would say uh, it will be around about 100. Interesting. Interesting. Would you say, or, or how would you describe, uh, if you can, the profile of uh, a buyer? Do you stratify or segment uh, different buyers? What's the mindset? Why, why, in your experience, does someone come to a Leica auction? Uh, we have all a long time... Um experience and uh, uh, long time contacts with uh, the main collectors worldwide. Uh, some of them are collecting just for fun. Other are, are collecting because they have a museum. Um, others um, are collecting uh, for investment reasons. So, um, and um, we know uh, or we try to cover a, a, a wide range of products, of uh, price niches, uh, to offer for everyone something interesting for his collection. So let's talk about that using the examples uh, uh, that you've already published, chief among them being that Oscar Barnack owned 105. Can you tell us a bit about that? This is Dennis part. Yeah, let me, let me just begin with some key facts. Uh, the Leica Zero series in general, there are 23 examples made, and we believe to be to have like 10 to 12 still in existence today. What really makes this one special is that it was actually used by Oscar Barnack, the inventor of the Leica. Uh, it's uh, been documented that it has been used till around 1930, and later it was given to his son Conrad who also did the engraving on top of the viewfinder. Uh, the camera itself was uh, still family owned till uh, around 1960s and was displayed in a museum in Germany and afterwards sold to a passionate uh, like collector in the US. Has that camera had film run through it, do you know, uh, in the last 50 years? Yes, we know this because we were very curious because this is uh, something I was curious about. And we um, normally when uh, no matter what camera we get for auction, we check it very seriously, we clean it. And uh, we for this camera, for this special camera, we have invited a specialist from Germany to clean it, to take a look at it. And I was sitting in my office and then uh, I was curious uh, would this camera work if we put the film inside? And then I went downstairs and asked this specialist, what do you think? Is the camera still working? And he said, yes, I think so. And we have tried it and yes, uh, and the uh, results are really amazing. So the shutter speeds are actually accurate. Ex exactly, yeah. Fantastic. To be honest, to be honest uh, we, 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 we are getting um, very good results, I think, with 250, 250. yeah, and uh, an aperture of uh, how what was like it? slightly stopped down, obviously, for the other signal. Yeah, 
but then the, the results are really great. It is amazing that we're talking about a camera that is literally 99 years old. Yeah, wow. Exactly, yeah. Wow. Really incredible. Uh, you talk about a wide range of, of price points. So you've got a bunch of MPs, you've got a 3F, you even have uh, some experimental prototypes, both in terms of optics and of different formats. I guess, Dennis, I'm going to turn to you again and ask you about some of those. Uh, yeah, we have uh, a like experimental Leica camera, for example, uh, where they tried to, uh, instead of having the shutter made out of cloth, they made it out of metal, like uh, like at the Leica Flex later. Uh, it never went into production, but it's a very amazing piece to see. It is also working, so you can crop and uh, release it. And we also have, for example, a, a prototype Sumilux, which is very close already to the serial production, but still the engraving is slightly different, the baron looks slightly different, and also the optical calculation is. It is very close to the final result, but it's still slightly different. So if you would compare it, you would probably notice. You also had, when we're talking about prototypes, this really interesting lens. Uh, I know it's old because the focal length is marked in centimeters rather than millimeters. And it is one big black honking optic, a 60 centimeter, 600 millimeter prototype telephoto. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's a very unique lens. Uh, it's first time it goes uh, onto the market. Uh, in general, the centimeter marking is, uh, you can see it on some lenses with like, uh, for example, the very early Elma lenses are also marked as five centimeter lenses. Um, I actually I actually have uh, a 3A with a collapsible five centimeter Sumar, mm -hmm. uh, original. Uh, I got it from my mother. She bought it off a Bauhaus trained photographer named Hilda Hubbock. Uh, so quite an interesting story there. One of the things that I, I love about Leica is that Leica does have in its history something called the Leica Freedom Train. And uh, it just makes me love the company all the more. But yeah, I get that. Going back to the old days. Wow. So, so you start with... Uh, and maybe, uh, Andreas, I turn to you about the auction and the organization of it. Uh, you have an estimated or a starting price. How, what are the mechanics uh, of an auction? Because you also probably make sense to ask you to talk about the language of auctions mm -hmm. and reserve prices and, and expected prices. Can you go through that? Yes. Um, for example, the starting price, that's the price the auctioneer begins with and the bidding begins with. And the estimates, these are the prices we expect um, the last bid will be during the auction. And uh, there is when a when a piece is auctioned mm -hmm. uh of course this is a business so mm -hmm. a certain bit of that price goes to the auction house mm -hmm. so in the case of uh number 105 oscar barnack's yes. own series zero leica uh what do you imagine this will eventually sell for at the auction it is hard to say our estimate is between between two and three million euros so yes we expect the price will be within this range and uh at the other end of the spectrum what do you expect uh maybe the prototype shutter metal shutter uh to sell for uh, this one is estimated to sell between 30 and forty thousand euros do you have anything less expensive that i could look at Yes, sure. That is what I have mentioned. We try to, to cover a wide range of products, but we also try to cover a wide range of price niches. So we are we have lots which are starting from two, 200 euros. That's more my speed. Yeah. <laughs> you and just have to wait a little bit for our full catalog. Yeah, 
Yeah, so we uh, we have some lots who are starting by, by two or three hundred euros. We are auctioning uh, instruction manuals, for example. I think two auctions ago we had one of the first like uh, instruction manuals. Mm -hmm. uh, a part of it were handwritten, and it also went up to around about three or four thousand euros. Um, then we have displays because some of our collectors uh, are auctioneering, uh, a, 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 like uh, M3, for example, a very special one, and they want to display it at home on the original display, which is very, very hard to get. And we are also trying um, to offer our customers these accessories and this uh, uh, um, and, and instruction manuals and all, all of this. Now, Alex, you also mentioned at the outset that you don't limit your auctions to exclusively to Leica gear. So uh, one of the very uh, special pieces in this auction is going to be a Contax, actually, which I thought when I first read the catalog was like the one that the renowned photographer Walker Evans used. But no, this is one of Walker Evans's contacts, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. It was his camera. He he was a very passionate photographer and he had a lot of cameras. Uh, we had the pleasure already some auctions ago to auction one of his other cameras. I think Roleflex. Yeah. Uh, Roleflex, for example. We also have been auctioned uh, two years ago. And now we have his contacts and this is, makes us very proud. Yeah, this is a very um uh, unique camera and um it, the camera comes with a book which uh, uh was made with this camera the pictures were made with this camera this is a city subway portrait so i i will tell you that his photography was instrumental in in my growth and uh, there's a very interesting story about precisely how he used that camera on the subways. Me, I, I just go on with uh, with this and I let people see me. I, I ask them about it. May I take your picture? But Walker Evans had a very well, different approach. Welcome to the club. We all have no man. <laughs> we can make pictures. <laughs> Maybe we can clarify. Um, when a, a customer is sending us a camera for auction, we normally um, recommend only to fix together with him a start price and an estimate price. Only a very few uh, of our customers are afraid that they will not achieve the price they are expecting, and then they can uh, put a reserve price. But normally, we do not have reserve prices. Are there any particular uh... Uh, items over the last eight years that have been particularly interesting to any of you and, and why? Yeah, I would say there were a lot of, um, for example, we have achieved in 2018 uh, the world record for the most expensive camera ever sold in an auction. This was um, also a Leica Zero Series with the serial number 122. This camera achieved uh, a 2.4 million inclusive premium. The, the, the prices which, we, which are announced in the press are always inclusive premium as well for all auction houses. So the premium is the, the uh, bit that comes back to the auction house? You know, you know, you know, because you have I know that means exactly. I know that means exactly. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Precisely. Uh, yeah. We, there's always a hammer price and then the premium for the auction house. And uh, this is the final price that the, the buyer has to pay. And this is the price uh, which is spread it to the news. So this means that you're expecting that this uh, number 105 just might exceed that to become the most expensive camera you've ever auctioned. Ex exactly, yeah. There is a, it's a good possibility that we will achieve a, a price above um, this uh, 2.4 million. But you never know. Um, it's a an auction is always a little bit also for the for the bidders, a little bit like a, a poker game. You can make a bargain. Or you uh, or the camera 
can go up like hell in price. So um, we never know how it ends up. Yeah, this is, makes it very thrilling for the buyers as well as for us, uh, the option house. I, I think if I were ever to uh, participate in that, I'd probably have to premedicate myself. You know, I have blood pressure issues, but uh, I mean, it, it sounds very exciting. It also sounds like it, it can be uh, uh, thrilling uh, and it can be very depressing if you come in as a bidder really wanting something and just getting to a point where someone outbids you and you just can't bring yourself to go higher. But the the entire notion of, of art, the art market, as an investment vehicle has gained quite a bit of currency, no pun intended, over the last uh, decade or so, I guess. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, we see um, more and more buyers who are um, buying the cameras for an in investment reasons. For some, you you have uh, to have uh, a knowledge about the cameras. This is very important. But for some models, we see a constantly increase in prices, for example, for the black paint cameras. But um, overall, uh, vintage um, cameras, um, especially like uh, vintage black cameras, I would say, are uh, increasing in price uh, um, uh, during the last years. Let us take a normal M6 um, with five or three years ago, you you get one in a good condition for 1500 yeah. now it costs 3000 which shows that also the um let me call it normal cameras are getting more and more expensive let me let me let me add something to um to this um pricing starting pricing and estimate prices we try to be conservative uh, with our estimate prices um, as an option house for example uh, last option we have been offered a, a leica mp uh, similar to the one we have now in our option for sure another serial number it was the 55 and i think our estimate can you remember guys was around 300 about 300 to 400 euros and it end up with 1 million hammer price which means 1.2 million euros sales price um we did not expect it but uh, how much how much did you expect it to go for it i want to hear that again what did you we had an estimate for this camera and this was our best guess between three and four hundred uh, thousand euros, but it ends up with one million hammer price, which means one point two million sales price to the to the buyer, which shows that also we, with our long time experience, are sometimes surprised uh, with uh, what prices we can achieve or that the, the the owner can achieve here. Yeah. Well, it strikes me that that someone who enjoys uh, an auction, tell me if I'm, I'm wrong about this, wouldn't be the first time I've been wrong about something, but it strikes me that someone who enjoys the uh, uh, auction process, enjoys the game, enjoys the hunt, which is to say it's an emotional thing. It's not just a uh, financial transaction, even when it's uh, being used as an investment. So it doesn't surprise me that, that you would be surprised because human nature is... Um, quirky yeah exactly <laughs> so uh i think this is is really interesting so can we get more into the specifics of when this will be held and will it be televised or will it be on youtube is there a way to watch this uh, to enjoy this vicariously for uh those of us who don't have those kinds of uh tastes champagne tastes or budgets um, yeah, um, the, the auction will take place on the 11th of June at the Lights Park. It's a must that we go to the Lights Park uh, from our uh, point of view because um, it's Oscar's camera or the, the, the main camera is the Oscar's camera. So we have to auction it in Wetzlar at the mothership. Sure. And, um, the, uh, Customers have the possibility to join, uh, to come to Wetzlar. Uh, if they want to do so, they have to register 
um, by Andreas. Uh, then we have a second um, opportunity to, um, to be part of the auction. You can place um, your bid via uh, liveauctioneers.com or directly uh, at our website, um, lightsauction.com. Um, and then there is a, a third opportunity that we call you. So you let us know in the run-up of the auction, which uh, lot you're interested in. And then my colleagues, uh, we are covering around about eight to 10 languages in our auction house, call you. Um, some of my colleagues have their long time um, counterparts on the phone, always the same, um, since 10 years, the same customers. And uh, yeah, with a lot of the customers we have, uh, they are family meanwhile yeah, for us and yeah. So what we'll do is uh, I will get all of those URLs and phone numbers from you and I'll be sure to put it in the description uh, and, and at the end of this. Thank you for reminding me to do that. And I, I think a lot of people will be very interested in participating in this one way or another, actively or vicariously. Uh, but you do raise an interesting question. Let me ask you this question. What are the three most common languages in which you interact with bidders? Now the, the, the auction itself, so the auctioneer, auctioneer is doing it in English. And um, we uh, have Chinese, we have English, and um, German, French, uh, German, French, and Italian. Well, guys, uh, I look forward to seeing the larger catalog. When can we expect to see all of the lots, Andreas? By the beginning of May, I think. So that's just a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. And uh, Dennis, this is always a loaded question. Uh, I managed to corner Peter Carba a couple of years ago. Uh, so let me ask you just straight up, do you have a favorite item uh, in this particular auction? Uh, in this one, uh, in this one, obviously it's the Leica Zero Series. It's uh, such an honor to have such a camera for sale. But besides that, uh, the, I really like the six millimeter Nikon lens, Nikon 2.8. It's uh, amazing and it's uh, amazing lens to see uh, in person with 220 degrees uh, feet of view. But there are so many, so many great items. The experimental M is so interesting to look at. The 3F Swedish Army is something you don't see very often. So, I could not choose one particular item as my favorite, so I have many things. Oh, you already did. You already did. I got you. I got you. Good choice. Good <laughs> choice. It is a delight to meet you all. And again, I, I do wish you uh, great success for you and your Thank you bidders. So Thank you. And uh, thanks for taking the time. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation below because this is an incredible audience. If you'd like a copy of our Streets of New York, the book, head over to www.3bmep.com slash books. If you'd like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one video session with me for a portfolio review, explore or hone your artistic voice, select gear and more, sign up at www.3bmep.com slash booking. Finally, consider supporting our work by using our no-cost-to-you affiliate links down below. Picking up some official three blind men and an elephant swag at 3bmep.threadless.com. Sending coffee money via PayPal or best of all, join us as a patron over at Patreon. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for it.